the first minutes the dinosaurs went extinct. As some scientists are looking into the future and exploring space and underwater, some scientists are still tracing back to the past. We have found groundbreaking evidence and studies that change the very concept of the existence of life on Earth. So what are these findings? How does it affect us? In this video, we will look at the minutes after the dinosaurs went extinct, what happened, and how life evolved after that. You could have recognized what appeared to be a star in the sky if you had been standing someplace in North America on a particular night at about 66 million years ago. The star appeared to become brighter if you continued to observe it for an hour or two, even though it was hardly moving. That's because it wasn't a star but an asteroid that was speeding toward Earth at a rate of around 45,000 miles per hour. The asteroid struck 60 hours after that. A supersonic shockwave was created by the air being compressed and intensely heated as it tore through the atmosphere. A shallow sea was created by the asteroid where the Yucatan Peninsula is now located. The Cretaceous era came to an end at that time, and the Pelagene era started. The asteroid, which was the size of a metropolis, was moving at up to 72,000 kilometers supersonic speeds. According to researchers, the asteroid had an impact equivalent to 10 billion atomic bombs the size of those used in World War II. At a 60-degree angle, it crashed into what is now the Gulf of Mexico. On impact, the majority of the asteroid and a comparable amount of the rocket struck vaporized at temperatures of 5,000 Celsius. A lake of superheated melt 70 kilometers across 3 kilometers deep was created when the surrounding rock melted. A few years ago, researchers at Los Alamos National Laboratory used the so-called Q-Machine, one of the most potent computers in existence at the time, to simulate the impact's effects. The outcome was a false color, slow motion video of the event that was shot second by second. The asteroid, which was at least six miles wide, slammed into Earth two minutes and left behind a crater that was 18 miles deep and 25 trillion tons of debris in the atmosphere. Imagine a pebble falling into a pond and making a splash, but a much larger scale. A peak taller than Mount Everest momentarily rose when the crust of the Earth recovered. Although the explosion had energy equivalent to 1 billion Hiroshima bombs, it lacked the characteristic mushroom cloud of a nuclear explosion. Rather, the first explosion created a rooster tail, a massive jet of molten material that departed the atmosphere, some of which fanned out over North America. Much of the stuff ignited anything within a thousand miles since it was many times hotter than the surface of the sun. In addition, the Western Hemisphere was covered in tectites, which are red-hot blobs of glass that have dissolved and expanded outward from an inverted cone of superheated rock. Some of the ejecta managed to escape the gravity of the Earth and enter unstable orbits around the Sun. Pieces of it traveled to other solar system planets and moons for millions of years. The debris eventually covered Mars, much as chunks of Mars that were propelled into space by ancient asteroid collisions have been discovered on Earth. According to a 2013 study published in the journal Astrobiology, tens of thousands of pounds of impact debris may have landed on Titan, a moon of Saturn, as well as on Europa and Callisto, satellites that circle Jupiter and many have potential as home planets for life. According to mathematical simulations, at least some of the roving debris still included living bacteria. Even as it devastated life on Earth, the asteroid may have planted life throughout the solar system. On impact, the asteroid exploded into flames. Its material combined with melted rock from the Earth to generate a blazing plume that extended halfway to the moon before collapsing into a pillar of flaming dust. According to computer simulations, the debris storm heated the air within 1,500 miles of ground zero, starting massive forest fires. The airborne material converged on the other side of the world when Earth turned, where it plummeted and ignited the entire Indian subcontinent. 70% of the world's forests were destroyed by flames according to measurements of the layer of ash and soot that eventually covered the Earth. Meanwhile, the impact's massive tsunamis tore up coasts, sometimes scraping away hundreds of feet of rock, pushed debris inland, then sucked it back out into deep water, creating jumbled deposits that oil men occasionally uncover during deep-sea drilling.
The damage had just started. Many of the specifics, which were deduced through computer simulations, field research on the debris layer, knowledge of extinction rates, fossils, and microfossils, and several other hints are still up for debate among scientists. However, the overall picture is consistently grim. For months, no sunlight was able to reach planet's surface due to the impact's dust and smoke as well as the conflagrations. The vast majority of plants died, the oceanic phytoplankton died, and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere decreased as photosynthesis all but ceased. Following the fire's extinguishment, Earth experienced a period of extreme cold, possibly even a deep freeze. Both the land-based and aquatic food systems on Earth have fallen apart. Approximately 75% of all species have gone extinct. The carbon cycle came to a halt, and over 99.999% of all living things on Earth died. The planet itself has turned poisonous. A trillion tons of carbon dioxide and 10 billion tons of methane and 1 billion tons of carbon monoxide were released into the atmosphere when the asteroids crashed. Vaporizing layers of limestone. All three of these gases are potent greenhouse gases. Additionally, the impact melted anhydrate rock, ejecting 10 trillion tons of sulfur compounds into space. The sulfur and water combined to make sulfuric acid, which then dispersed as acid rain and may have had sufficient strength to peel the leaves from remaining plants and leach the soil's nutrients. Earth science and engineering researchers at Imperial College London are painstakingly building 3D simulations of the moment of impact and the generation of fast-moving dust cloud that circled the Earth in a matter of hours, ushering an impact winner that put an end to the reign of the dinosaurs by raking over physical evidence extracted by drilling hundreds of meters into the ocean-covered crash site. Sesamic waves would have circled the planet several times after the original explosion. Dinosaurs living thousands of kilometers distant from the collision would have suffered fractured bones after being struck by the hurricane-forced winds, and anything within a radius of 1,000 kilometers would have been burned to a crisp. Surrounding rock would have been liquefied to form a pool of superheated melt 70 kilometers across and 3 kilometers deep. Further out, rock temporarily behaved like fluid for about 10 minutes during crater formation. Explosive steam jets would have soared into the sky as water surged back into the crater. The sun would have been blocked from view as a molten curtain of debris, or ejecta, was hurled above the Earth's atmosphere and traveled around the globe. It would have seemed as though the world was ending, even if it was quite at the end. The puzzle of what took place that day has captivated experts for a long time. The layer of debris, ash, and soot left behind the asteroid collision is still visible in the sediment of the Earth today as a thin black stripe of the width of a notepad. The Territory Period and Cretaceous Period are separated by this, which is known as the KT Boundary. Both above and below the KT layer, mysteries abound. Massive amounts of gas and dust were released into the atmosphere by numerous volcanoes throughout the late Cretaceous, and the air then had far greater carbon dioxide concentrations than the air we breathe today. There was no ice on the planet, and climate was tropical. But because we know so little about the creatures and plants that existed then, researchers have been looking for fossil beds as close to the KT boundary as they can. The infamous three-meter dilemma is one of the paleontology's greatest riddles. In the layers three meters, or about nine feet below the KT boundary, a depth reflecting many thousands of years, hardly any dinosaur remains have been discovered in an exhaustive search that has lasted a whole century and a half. As a result, several paleontologists have asserted that the dinosaurs were already in danger of extinction before the asteroid hit, possibly as a result of volcanic eruptions and climactic change. What do you think happened during that time? Share it with us in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel to learn more interesting things.